Hi everybody, today's project is a vice restoration. This is a vice I picked up for about $4 um, when I bundled it in some tools a while back. I've uh, been wanting to restore it. As you can see here, it is pretty rusted up. It's pretty roached in a lot of spots. Um, it is a three inch vise. That's what the jaws measure across, as you can see there. It is Desmond Steven at a Ur Urbina Urbana, Ohio. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong for the folks in Ohio. Um, and it's a Simplex Utility. As you can see there, it's missing the one little piece there for the handle that keeps it from swiveling. So I'll have to figure something out there. So first thing I did was break it down. And the hardest part with breaking it down here was getting off that ring there. It was peened over in three spots. So I had a really... Um, hit on it with a screwdriver. I used the Dremel tool, took the peens down. As you can see there, they're pretty pronounced. But I was able to uh, bang that uh, ring off. If I had to do it again, I probably would have heated it up and maybe it would have expanded. Um, then getting those screws out was tough. I soaked them in WD-40 um, overnight and then I was able to get them out. If I had some heat, I probably would have heated those up as well. I did use a screwdriver uh, with a metal end on it too and just kind of banged it a little bit to get those screws out um, and they came out in pretty nice shape i did file them a little bit as well um that way they would uh grab the screwdriver better so let's bring it over to the wire so i started off with the six inch stiff brush um went back and forth with that several times put all the pieces through that had two coats of paint on it it looked like the original color uh, was a maroon color darkish red and then there was the red color that was put on top of it then I moved it over here to the softer wheel and uh, did this several times with all the pieces went back and forth okay this is what it looks like after um, a bit on the wire wheel uh, lesson learned, if I had to do it again, I would have sprayed it with paint uh, stripper first prior to going on the wire wheel because it made a mess and created a lot more work uh, than it needed to be. Uh, so I think I'm pretty happy with the wire wheel at this point. I am going to go to some sanding and filing at this point, trying to smooth out some rough edges. I'm thinking of putting the, the teeth back on there. Uh, the jaws I should say and then hit, hitting it with the sander so it could all be nice and level uh, I'm gonna continue to work on these jaws a little bit what I've been doing is hitting them a little bit um, with a Swiss file um, across the grain uh, with this little file just kind of working it in there little by little to make the teeth better the teeth on here it looks like this you know this pipe fitting jaw is what is really beat up and what they must have used this for whoever owned it prior as you can see here as well that's really beat up um, wiped it down with mineral spirits i'll do it again before i paint it but i'm going to try to continue to work these teeth uh, making them nice and smooth the best i can filing out the top here this little anvil section and this little work area here i'm going to try to smooth that out on the belt sander and use all these files that i've got over the years i got a whole drawer of some really nice vintage except for this cheap one that's of course right on top uh, i do got some really nice nicholson made in the usa files um, and I look forward to using them to complete this project. This set of Swiss files is one of my favorite. Um, if you see there, Nicholson made in the USA. Uh, this is a vintage, vintage set. I picked up at a garage sale and I think I paid $2 for it. And the lady actually would have probably gave it to me for free. They were her dad's and she just wanted to make sure somebody had them that was going to use them um, as much as he did. As well as these glasses I'm wearing right now. Uh, these were his as well. How cool are they? Made in the USA, red, white, and blue uh, safety glasses. So let's see how the filing and the sanding goes. Okay, so I started out here on the belt sander. I don't show all the different belts I used here, but I used the belt sander for a long time and went from coarse to fine and back and forth on all the different pieces. And I'm just using a piece of wood there. I uh, learned that from watching all those videos with Scout Crafter, using that piece of wood to guide the belt to the curvature of the piece you're working on. And then I moved over to the angle grinder, four and a half inch flap disc. Started same thing with coarse using fine flaps and this made short work of it and made the project actually pretty fun and it's a great tool to use okay guys this is one of those projects once again that you could continue to just 
never finish. You could keep sanding and grinding and sanding and grinding to make it um, absolutely perfect. So at this point, I think I'm going to quit. Um, I'm kind of happy with the way it came out. Um, these old vices, obviously, the castings are very, very rough, um, as you can see here on those type of parts that I didn't grind or sand. Um, and this here, you can see I grinded and sanded it down really smooth. So I'm hoping that when the paint hits that, it'll look um, like new, uh, look better than new, actually. One of the things I did towards the end is I put the, the jaws back on and I grinded and sanded them in place so they'd be nice and smooth. Obviously, I'll take those off um, prior to painting. Um, I'm going to mask off the stuff prior to painting that I don't want to get paint on, which is this little work area here. I think I'm going to take the slide and paint that off, uh, tape that off and leave that nice and I'll continue to shine that up a little bit. I think that'll look real sharp. Really happy with the way the teeth came out on this. I mean, they were just smushed over. And at this point, there's a little bit from the rust maybe in there that got the pitting out, but... Um, they came out pretty good where they're actually going to have um, a little bite on them if I use it for uh, putting pipe in there. And the way I did that was with this half uh, moon type file. Really nice old one that I had Nicholson uh, made in... Oh, this one says Brazil, believe it or not. Um, interesting. But it worked really well. I just kind of got it in the teeth and I just worked it and it took forever. I just kind of worked a few... Uh, strokes flipped it over so it would continue to make that nice round profile that it had uh, when it was new um, the handle itself was you know tricky to work with. I didn't want to take this out or anything like that because it's made in there so I'll continue to refine this prior to maybe putting it on there continue to shine it up off it I did get it on the grinder got that nice and smooth that was all marred up most of the handle I got the big marring out of um, one thing I didn't mention earlier, yeah, I grinded, sanded, used the buffing wheels, but I also used these in the drill, and um, this helped get into some of the tighter spots and whatnot. Um, I should have called that out earlier. Um, what else did I forget to mention earlier? Uh, that's about it. I mean, there's a tiny little bit of paint in there. I just couldn't get out. I even hit it with the mineral spirits for a while. I'm just going to leave that. So the next step is mask it off. Use a little bit of this self-etching primer. Let that set. And then I am going to go with this Regal Red. And I'm really excited to see how this comes out. That's going to look really sharp, I think, with the Regal Red. So, Regal Red. Let's get to it. I didn't get a lot of video of me painting this project, but here I am just um, shooting it with uh, the self-etching primer. And the key here is just shake the can well, short strokes, um, don't over spray it, let it dry. It needs two good coats. And then after two good coats, you, you, you're ready to go sand it. You got to sand it and then paint it. Um, the key to any painting project is to prep. And as you can see here, I masked it very well. And the masking took longer than the painting. Uh, definitely for the primer piece. Uh, that's the key. The painting process takes time for all the coats to dry. So while I was waiting, I had to fabricate a piece for that missing handle that goes in that piece there that keeps the vise from swiveling. So I started with some stock, uh, it's just a bolt and an end cap nut and I figured if I could fabricate a piece out of that it would look pretty much like it should be there. So I cut the head off the bolt and I put it in my drill and I worked it on the belt sander knocking off the edges of that end cap trying to make it look like a bullet and overall I thought it came out really well. One problem didn't fit so back to the drawing board dug this little one out of my toolbox this little uh, end cap that had a flat end on it as you can see there um, and I went back through that same process again taking all the material down uh, making it I don't know half the size maybe of what it was originally same process after cutting the head off the bolt chalked it up and basically um, ran it in through the belt I uh, used both belt sanders, used my thin one, my big one, um, and then over to my tap and die, the cheap set I picked up not too long ago, and it did the trick. And let's see how it came out. All right, here is the finished product, and I am really happy with the way it came out. 
Um, this is the fabricated piece that I ended up making, as you can see. Um, it spins. That was the problem. It wasn't clearing with the original piece that I made. I really liked the way the original piece came out. It looked uh, like it was um, definitely meant to be there. Uh, this didn't look, does not look too shabby either. It just goes in a little deeper, and it's got the flatter ends on it. And it, it's a pretty cool uh, fabricated piece, and I'm definitely happy with it. Okay, so painting the white lettering. I did not show any of that in the video, and I'm really happy with the way that came out. The way I did it is I used a miniature brush. I bought this set on Amazon. It was probably about $6 or so. And as you can see, the tips on these are very fine. And it was painstaking, but basically you could just hit those highlights of the letters um, very gently and I did two coats on those and I did this side as well um, I did do the inlay here there was a stamp 300 which is the model number and basically the way I did I did that is I just laid a little paint on it and gently wiped it off I kind of like it looks cool and I was able to use the brush to paint the inlay uh, around the the handle there and I really like the little accent that gives it there as well let's take a little closer look at this vise and see how it came out do need to make one of those wood bases that scout crafter uh, recently just made a video about but I'll hold on to it for now just so you can kind of see how it opens I did put a little super lube on it uh, and I'm just really really happy with the way this came out uh, from so many different uh, pieces I mean just look how nice this came out this slide here that was just beat to to death and I don't know if you could see in there the teeth uh, on here I was able to get the Swiss file in there and basically reprofile all of that these pipe fitting jaws I was able to completely refit those as well and that definitely has some bite to it if I needed to use that in the future I was able to get all the nicks off of here the anvil got all the nicks off of there. there's a tiny little bit in here that um, if I had to do it again, maybe I would have put a little filler in there, maybe a little epoxy or JB Weld and sanded it down. But I took a lot off of this, um, and there's just a little bit of nicks. I just didn't want to take it too far down. Um, and, but this was all rough casting like this, and I was able to get it really smooth. And honestly, it looks better than it did new. This thing didn't probably look this good when it was new. It swivels well. Um, the lock piece works great here that I was able to fabricate. And it looks better than new. A little bit that I found out about Simplex Utility. Uh, they went out of business in 1964. They did make stuff for war, um, the war effort in World War II. Uh, they were around for a long time out of Ohio. And they made really good quality vices. I looked on eBay just to see what they're getting for these. And just beat up, not restored. They're getting 60 plus uh, sold. I didn't look at just what they're listed. I always look at what, what they actually sold for. And plus shipping. Usually another 20 bucks on top of that. So I don't plan on selling it. I was just curious about that. I'm going to probably just sit this on a shelf. Uh, the vice does go 3 inches across. It is a 3 inch model. And um, that's it. I'm calling it done. And I'm very, very happy with it. Just a pain in the neck. I spent a lot of time fabricating this one piece. Not having a lathe was definitely, you know, it made me keep regretting the fact that I walked away from a lathe uh, right before I moved the last time. That's why I did not purchase it. I was at a yard sale and could have picked one up at 250 bucks. It was a mini lathe, but it would have been perfect for a project like this. This cheap little tap and die set that I got not too long ago came in handy for this project as well. It made me think, though, I probably need to pick up a better quality set. And the last thing is these Doyle screwdrivers are fantastic. Um, they're cheap. They're from Harbor Freight. Uh, and it just, I don't know, for whatever reason, it just worked really well on this project. The head of that fit just perfect inside the screws. Um, when they were rusted, I was able to use this to kind of bang them. And I was able to put a quarter wrench on here. And, um, wrench. I think it was a quarter inch and I was able to use that to get leverage to open that up as well. Um, I hope you really liked the video. Please like and subscribe. I plan on doing more resto videos. 
Uh, I plan on doing more garage sale tool finds. I got a really cool tool haul that my dad just sent me. And um, thanks for watching. Have a great day.